EcoFlow sent these two inverter power station boxes to me a year ago, but uh, I've had a slight disagreement with them on something since then, so this is not a sponsored video, but I thought I'd make a video about them anyways. And the nice thing this way is, I can say what I want. Now these are uh, 3.6 kilowatt hours lithium iron phosphate, which is a lower power density, so they're freaking heavy, so uh, they've got the wheels on the back for cutting them around like one of those airport type suitcases, with a handle on the front, just like the suitcases, and that makes it manageable to wheel them around, but uh, it was quite a struggle to get them on the workbench. I was hoping to work them up to the workbench just with uh, boxes, bringing them up, but that nearly ended in disaster. But I realized once I got them high enough, it's actually not too bad of a lift to put my arms around them because I don't have to bend down, and then I could just lift them the rest of the way onto the workbench. So what's interesting about these boxes is they're both 120 volts, but they can be connected together with this hub thing that plugs in here on the sides with a really beefy connector. And that connects them in series and synchronizes them so you can get uh, 240 volts out. Now they do make versions of these boxes for Europe where each box puts out 240 volts, so I'm not sure why they couldn't just make one box so that it can configure itself for 240 volts instead of using two. But this way you kind of get the uh, two phases uh, split phase, which you wouldn't have if you had just uh, 240 volt out of one box. Now with their previous and smaller version, the uh, Delta Max, these ones are the Delta Pro, um, there's a bit of weirdness the way it works because it makes the 120 volts just with a boost converter followed by an H-bridge and as a result of that um, neutral on here is not the same as ground and cannot be connected to ground um, which would make uh, hooking two of these in series kind of challenging because then the uh, ground inside the box would have to be floating to essentially be hot so I'm curious how it works with these boxes so I got a power cord plugged in here and I've got the scope probes ground clips on the ground and these two on neutral and hot and let's see if I turn this thing on and we see both neutral and hot have got a single arm with respect to ground both about 60 volts although it looks like the uh, yellow signal is a little bit bigger than the blue signal here so not quite balanced so let's try running a light off of the uh, 60 volts between one of the phases and ground okay gotta turn it on Okay, and now let's put this between the black phase and the uh, ground, just connecting it like this. Oh, look at that! So now everything is on one phase here. Let's try putting it on the other side. And now it's on the other, so it would appear that neutral and hot, that output just kind of floats with respect to ground. Let's just try a 47 kilo ohm resistor between ground and the black side here. Oh look, and that already moves it all the way over, so uh, almost all the way over. So the blue phase has got uh, just a little bit of voltage left on it. So if I accidentally touched ground and hot with my fingers, it shouldn't seriously zap me. But uh, my name's not Medi, so I won't try this. So let's plug this hub into both of these boxes. Plugged in, and there's a separate on-off button for the AC here. And both of them have turned off their 120 volt AC when I turn this on. I don't know why they need to do that, but uh, that's what it does. Even though the light's still on, there's no power coming out. My table saw is uh, one and three quarter horsepower, but it's wired for 240 volts. So I'll just plug that in here and we'll turn that on. So I could cut through that chunk of maple no problem, but then again, these boxes are rated for 30 amperes each, and the table saw, when it's wired to 120 volts, still runs off of a 15 amp circuit, so it should only draw about 7.5 amperes at full load, so we're way under capacity, so no problem. So this hub connects uh, both of these boxes in series, and somehow gets them in sync with each other so that uh, they actually add, because if they're out of phase, that would be a holy mess. And uh, yeah, it works. But annoyingly, while doing that, I don't have a separate 120 volt circuit coming out. So let's look on here. Apparently, if I plug into this big connector, I can still get 120 volts between here and here, and here and here, and then the 240 volts here. I just wish there was like a separate 120 volt socket on here too, but it is what it is. 
So I got a 240 volt plug on here and hooked up my scope to it and we see uh, both phases, the uh, blue and the yellow with respect to ground. So we have 120 volts between ground and those phases so let's try running that light bulb off of it. So I'll put that on ground and then touch this here. Nothing. But looking at the scope it looks like basically uh, these two phases float with respect to ground, so I can't use ground to actually run current into it. But I should be able to get 120 volts out of this connector. So now I'll just plug this into the middle part here and connect onto here. Okay, so we do get 120 volts this way. And if I stuck another wire in there, that would work too, I'm sure. Well, with everything floating with respect to ground, I just uh, stuck the wire in here and used that as my reference for the scope. And what's interesting here is the yellow trace is actually a fair bit bigger than the blue trace. So measuring that with a multimeter, I got 132 volts on one side and 107 volts on the other. And that, of course, is also true for the phases here. That is still within acceptable limits for 120 volt main, but it's a bit odd. Hmm. Huh. I just tried turning on the table saw and it wouldn't, but this is actually not the first time that's happened to me. Sometimes it just doesn't like the table saw turning on. The uh, startup surge is just a bit much. Okay, so the table saw was still on, now it's running. And we can see this box is putting out 240 watts. This one's just 211 watts. And I think what's happening here is this one is less than half charged and this one is full. So I think it's putting out more voltage on this one than on this one to use more power from this one, which would eventually balance these two. Kind of makes sense to do that. And it would make sense to go even further to have uh, one box put out most of the voltage because it's got way more juice in it. But then you'd be going way out of spec on 120 volts, which you could still get out of that round connector. Now what led to disagreements between me and EcoFlow is if I hook up my circular saw to one of these boxes and start it up, the inverters put out some really funny looking waveforms. And I'm curious what happens now if I have that kind of load on 240 volts, but I don't have a 240 volt power tool that uses that much juice, so I hooked up two circular saws. They're hooked up in series with a bunch of clip leads hooked up to the 240 volt output, so now the question is what happens if I start these both at the same time in series? What happens to the waveforms coming out of that? Because the two boxes have to coordinate somehow. So it could be a bit wonky. So I got this running now and I put the scope in roll mode so that I can stop it after I run the saw because I don't have a good way of triggering off of that. Okay, let's have a look at what we got. Okay, so we do see some of this funny inverter behavior, which is basically its overload protection circuit kicking in, and it just kind of oscillates between the circuit kicking in and not kicking in. But interestingly, I only get this on the blue phase, not on the yellow phase. So it's as if only one of them was overloaded. Oh, look at this, and now the yellow phase is compensating for the blue phase being a bit under voltage because of all this oscillation by going higher. And then once the saw kind of gets up to speed, then the current isn't so bad anymore. At which point uh, we just have some instability in the uh, inverter control feedback algorithm, I think. This is not nearly as bad as uh, this bit here. And let's see, and once we're, yeah, and then here it, once the saw is further up to speed, these waveforms become smooth. So once the saw's up to speed, it's no longer way over current and we're looking much better. Although interestingly enough, right around the zero crossover, we see some uh, slightly odd thing there, but overall it's a pretty good waveform. So I was kind of expecting to find some kind of weirdness to report on, especially given the older boxes and also some other YouTuber had mentioned at some point uh, that he'd blown one of these Delta Pro boxes by <laughs> connecting neutral to ground while trying to make something to charge his Tesla off of him. But uh, I'm not seeing any sort of weirdness and I don't see a problem with connecting neutral to ground because essentially it floats, so 
it's fine that way and it seems to work fine there is of course the weird sort of oscillation on the uh, inverter output when it's way overloaded while the circular saw starts up but uh, those circular saws they draw a crazy amount of current like over 50 amperes when they start so that is kind of within reason I guess uh, although that sort of thing is what I had my disagreement with EcoFlow over because uh, I said hey that's this is a problem because it blew my kilowatt meter and they said no no this behavior is normal I'm like no that's not normal if it blows my kilowatt meter but it turns out uh, most inverters when they're way overloaded will do something of that sort because there's a hardware protection circuit that just crowbars the output to off when uh, when it hits that kind of overload because it needs to be super fast faster than the regular control algorithm can respond and so the output is uh, much less elegant than if it was the regular control circuit so yeah uh, it looks like they work like they should uh, which <laughs> makes the video not quite as interesting as I thought it might be